Hi, I'm Linda with paperboutique.blogspot.com and today is all about having fun with Vintage. And we'll talk a little bit more about this magazine or book in just a moment. But here is an example of a vintage necklace that we'll be making as part of this two-part series. I'm also going to show you how to make these adorable earrings and how to use your cuddle bug to emboss the brass, how to color it with the patina. Well, to begin, let's talk a little bit about the Vintage products. And let me move this book back in. Vintage Natural Brass Company was created by three women, Wendy Mullane, Jeannie Holland, and Jess Italia Lincoln. I hope I'm pronouncing their names correctly. The Vintage Brass, Art Metal, and Artisan Copper, and this is a piece already embossed. This is just a plain blank, are not antique plated. They're nickel and lead-free compliant. The natural brass is solid brass and it consists of 85% copper and 15% zinc. Their art metal is an iron-based metal and their artisan copper is a solid copper. And I'll show you pictures of them in just a moment. Be sure to check out vintage.com to see all of their products, all of their metals. Well, let's talk a little bit about the patinas. And when we do this project, we're going to use the patina. And the patinas are actually opaque ink specially formulated by Ranger to adhere to metal. They create beautiful and durable patina effects. They are available in 15 colors. And I love this one, but this one's my favorite. And this is the colors that we're gonna be using in our first project. And it's moss, and this one is jade, and this one is kind of a, a blue-green. And they vary in price. I paid $19.50 for the three of mine, but there's, there's different prices at different companies. And the other thing we'll be using is a vintage glaze, which is a clear top coat and patina extender for metal. It's non-yellowing, non-cracking, it's permanent when dry, it's fast drying, and no acids. And you can also use this glaze to dilute the patinas. And I want to thank Arlene from Red Magpie Beads for, for that particular tip. The other part is we're going to actually be embossing metal. And Vintage has worked in conjunction with Sizzix to create these little embossing plates. But what I want to show you, we have two black cats and they're sleeping right above me. So every once in a while you'll see a black cat hair. And we're going to actually use, I want to show you how to use the cuddle bug and your cuddle bug folders instead of these deco emboss folders. But you can buy these as well and they work super well. And they'll work in the um, they'll work in your Sizzix big kit. They'll work in your cuddle bug. There is a vintage special edition Sizzix machine. I'll show you a photo in a moment. That's just amazing. You can also, like I said, use them in your cuddle bug. The other tool we're going to be using is this reliefing block. And let me see if I can find the the box that it came in and it has a side the dark gray is for sanding heavy metal and we'll sh i'll show you how to do this the light gray is for polishing and buffing and the white is just a medium sandpaper so we'll be using this as well there are tons of products available in the vintage line and all of the findings including findings and lots more brass blanks but i just went quickly over some of the basics and I want to give you a warning. This can become habit forming. Besides making jewelry, you can add these embossed blanks to your cards and pages. You can even use alcohol inks on the blank and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get started playing with the products, I want to show you one of their books. There are several books, but I bought mine at Red Magpie Beads in Helena. In fact, I bought most of the supplies that I've been talking about there after attending a make and take demo at her store. Arlene, the owner, is an amazing teacher, so stop in if you get a chance. Let me just show you some of the more pieces of metal that I've been talking about. Here's an example of the art metal, which is a little darker metal. This is the brass and this is the copper. We're gonna be using this particular patina effect on the earring 
and we're going to be doing something similar to this on the pendant as well. Let me show you some of the others. This, these are examples using the embossing folder that I talked about, and here's a photo of this amazing machine. And I'm not going to go through the entire book. Here is an example of some of the patinas, the different color patinas. It's just really a fun and easy way to make jewelry. Well, what I'd like to do now is go ahead and pause the video and I'll get set up with our cuddle bug so that we can go ahead and make this earring. Well, let's go ahead and make this earring. What I'm going to show you how to do is how to emboss a metal blank and we'll paint it and sand it. We're not going to actually put the earring together, but once this is finished, you're going to use a jump ring and then I attached it to a bead and an earring finding. Now, um, we're going to use just a regular cuddle bug embossing folder and I love this one. Look at all the different possibilities. I'll put blue under it so you can see. And you're going to use a piece of the metal, an embossing blank, and this ranges in price depending on the size from a dollar to a dollar fifty. So I don't like to experiment with those. What I do is I punch out a, a piece of paper that's the same size, line it up where I want it on my cuddle book folder, and then I'll go ahead and do the, the metal. Now it may not turn out perfectly while I'm filming it and I have an extra one that I can show you if it doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move this. I practiced placing this where I wanted it on the folder and I'm just gonna, it's gonna move around just a little bit on me and I want this I'm going to turn it the other direction. I want the hole to be kind of lined up right here. I know you're not able to see that. Let me just see. I can't get it quite where it needs to be. I'm going to move it one more time, just a little bit. There we go. Then I'm going to put it on my embossing pad. I'm going to put it, there's going to be an A pad a B spacer pad. I'm going to put that down and I'm going to put another B pad on top and I'm going to show you that in just a second. I'll bring in the cuddle bug and then I've got my sandwich which is, let me put this in, the A plate, the B plate, the cuddle bug folder, and then the B plate. And this is just a well-loved cuddle bug. What I'm going to do, because I want it to be a little deeper, I'm going to move it in once. I'm going to go back again, go forward. I'm going to do it two or three times just to get a good imprint on it. You could also add like a piece of cardstock underneath if you wanted it to be um, embossed a little bit more deeply. Then I'm going to take it out, open it up, and then, oh, it turned out perfect. Yay! It's exactly where we wanted it. And I don't know if you can see this. What we're gonna do next is paint it and I'll come in with the camera while I set up for painting it and we'll zoom in a little bit closer. So let's pause for a second time and I'll get us set up for inking. Okay, now we're set up for inking and this is what we're making and here is the embossing blank that we just finished embossing and I'm using two colors. I'm using a jade and I'm using this blue green which I love and what I'm using is just an inexpensive paintbrush and unlike the alcohol inks that you usually apply with a sponge, they recommend that you apply the patina inks with um, a paintbrush. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a heavy coat, and I'm going to do um, I'm going to do both colors and sort of blend the colors together. And let's just go ahead and get started. Oh, this is a mat that I'm not sure if it's a basil mat, a splat mat, or a mat from Ranger, but it's a silicone mat, and it'll be great because we can put the paint right on it. And so I'm just going to use a little bit, and you can always add more. There's the jade, 
and here's the beautiful blue and I'm just going to put it right here and we may need more I hope you can see that it might be off camera so I'm going to slide that down and then what I'm going to do is just dip my paintbrush in and I've got quite a bit on and then I'm really doing a pretty pretty heavy coverage I don't know if you can see that and what I'm trying to do is get in the crevices because we're going to be sanding off the top and I really want and I, I'm going to add just a little bit more green I want a little bit heavier coverage in the bottom and let's just go ahead and fill that in and you can all the fun thing about this is you can always add more and I'm just using my fingers here and then next what I'll do is I'll come in just around the edges and blend a little blue and blend a little bit more green I don't know if you can can see that and just give it a little bit of a blue kind of color and it blends really nice now what you're gonna do and you're not gonna let this dry too long but it's gonna take a while so we're not gonna have time to actually let it dry but let me show you what the next step is you're gonna bring in after it's dried your sanding and then what I'm gonna use is the dark gray side and then you're gonna go over it rather rigorously and it's just gonna take off the top where you can see that the top will show through and then after you've done that all you're gonna do is use the light gray side and I'll show you here and I'm doing it pretty hard and buff it so you've just got a really nice shine and that is all there is to it and if you don't like the colors what I did discover the hard way is you can remove some of it with acetone so if you have something that you really don't like it takes quite a bit of acetone and a cotton ball but you can remove it and like I said you can also use alcohol ink and let me just quickly show you this is a copper mixative and what I did is I just used a couple of colors of alcohol ink now ideally when you see this you can see you want it on the background and then you want to sand it off well with the alcohol ink I really kind of like the color on the top so I went back in and added it but you can see right here here's some of the copper so you can do this exact same technique using the alcohol inks you can use them what I did is I just used a little piece of um, paper towel but you can also use um, your sponges and this is actually a blank of um, the vintage cop yeah this no this was brass this was vintage brass and I embossed it using one of the deco embosses so you can see it gives a little deeper edge to it but I really like the soft look that you get with the earring well let me just show you real quickly the necklace again and in our next video we're going to be doing this technique well I'd like to thank you for watching and please stay tuned for the final vintage video we're going to be doing this necklace and more thanks for watching and please visit my blog at www.paperboutique.blogspot.com for more projects and ideas bye bye